some years ago, I was at a youth retreat where they had now, a one of the great questions that people God the Creator should be obvious by the Gentiles. If you were looking down or Jesus from high lines of God the Creator. In our snapshot of the book of Exodus, we gave a brief look at the ten plagues in Egypt, but a more muted counterpoint is also being played out as the story unfolds. It can easily be missed. We sometimes think that Satan is merely fighting against the righteous king and his kingdom, but in fact he's also trying to construct his own. Remember the Lord said, when accused of being in league with the devil, quote, if Satan casts out Satan, he's divided against himself. How then will his kingdom stand? Matthew 12, 26. So while the main battle is center stage, Pharaoh, devil-like, offers a sneaky series of compromises to Moses for Israel. First, the first compromise is found in Exodus 8, 25. Go, sacrifice to your God in the land, says Pharaoh. There's lots of room here and we're a tolerant people. As long as you don't claim exclusivity for your God, there's probably room for his statue over there between the frog god and the gnat god. But Israel was to have no other gods before Yahweh. Listen to what the Lord says. Do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? And what communion has light with darkness? And what accord has Christ with Belial? Or what part has a believer with an unbeliever? And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? Therefore, come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord, and I will receive you. 2 Corinthians 6, verses 14 to 17. Moses answered to Pharaoh, Our lamb is an abomination to the Egyptians. Some things are not negotiable. Number two. The second compromise is found three verses later. Go, says Pharaoh, but not too far. Subtle, isn't it? All things in moderation. This is similar to the devil's ploy today. You don't want to be too different. Try to fit in a little. As they say, when in Rome, do somewhat as the Romans do. Don't make people awkward by talking about the exclusivity of Jesus. The offer was too good to be true, of course. Pharaoh hardened his heart and wouldn't let them go, even a little way. Even though Moses asked the Lord to remove the flies, and he did, Pharaoh had no interest in setting people free. Nor does the devil today. 3. Pharaoh tries again in chapter 10, verse 11, although it wasn't much of an offer. Let the men go, he said. Keep your children in Egypt. Dear Christian fathers and mothers, don't encourage your young people to be at home in the world. How many children see their parents longing for the melons and cucumbers and are drawn then to the stronger foods, the leeks, onions, and garlic? For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father but is of the world, 1 John 2.16. Only the Lord is enough to satisfy. Number four. The final ploy is recorded in chapter 10, verse 24. Go serve the Lord, only let your flocks and herds be kept back. In other words, leave your business here. It's a dog-eat-dog -dog world and Christian principles don't work there. Moses responds, not a hoof will be left behind. Good for Moses, and good for every believer who rejects these compromises and lives as a pilgrim and a stranger in the earth. This isn't home, but home is just ahead. Let's keep pressing on, encouraging each other daily, and so much the more as we see our day of departure approaching.